everybody, Dan Bailey here. I'm out here on the shores of the Kinnick Glacier. It's a beautiful June afternoon. Uh, it's honestly rarely this sunny and rarely this warm. It's, there's not very many t-shirt days out here at the glaciers, so I'm gonna take it. In my last video, uh, I did a little mini workshop at the Colony Glacier, which is straight out that way, about five miles. Uh, it's to give you an idea. They're, they're very close together in a relative sense, but they, they each have a different feel. And so I like to visit both locations. And in fact, uh, I'd have to say the Kinnick is my favorite. I've, I've spent a lot more time out here. There's just something really magical about this place. Uh, so I'm, it's fun for me to do these videos out here and, and, and share with you one of my favorite places. So I don't always do a lot of gear reviews. I figure there's enough gear noise on the web and there's certainly enough YouTube videos out there where people geek out on just about every piece of camera gear that exists. But I do occasionally like to feature specific items, uh, some of my favorite pieces of gear. Uh, the things that I find integral to my own style and that I think people who share a similar approach and photography style to me might enjoy as well and find very useful. So I'm going to share with you some of the reasons that I love this lens and show you some image examples that illustrate uh, how I use it in my own photography. And so if you do own this lens, this 35 f2, uh, hopefully this will inspire you to help you get the most out of it. Uh, and if this is a lens that you're curious about, uh, hopefully this will shed some light on, on what you can do with it and why it's kind of a special little lens. So the first thing I like about it is that it's small and stylish. I mean, look at this thing. Isn't that just the cutest little lens? Uh, it's got this little tapered front. It's very short. It's actually modeled after one of the Leica Summicron lenses. Uh, it, it's very close to that in physical design, which is why a lot of people refer to these little Fuji Primes as the Fujicrons. And I just feel this one epitomizes that design idea really well. Uh, it just has such a classic look and feel to it. Uh, and I, it looks awesome on the X-Series bodies. I've got one on my X-T3 right here. And being a 35 millimeter focal length on the Fuji sensors, the APS-C size sensors, uh, that gives you that classic 50 millimeter look. And 50 millimeter lens was the lens that a lot of people started with back in the day. And that's, that was my very first lens. I had a 50 millimeter f1.4 on my Nikon FM2. And so this 35 gives you that classic 50 millimeter look. Uh, some people like to call it the nifty 50. Uh, it's just such, such a timeless uh, standard look in photography. And being relatively small, it's, it's very inconspicuous. You know, a lot of photographers prefer to have a much more inconspicuous look. They don't want to call attention to themselves and say, hey everyone, look at my gear. Look, I'm a pro right here. And so having this little tiny lens on there uh, it, just, it just makes it easy to transport. You just kind of look like a tourist and you're not going to draw a lot of eyes. In addition, uh, you're, you're probably going to be allowed in certain places that don't allow pro cameras inside there. So maybe concerts and museums and, and things like that uh, because you're not, you don't have the look of a pro shooter. You're not a serious photographer. And so uh, this, this having a little lens like this can actually help you get into places and shoot photos that you might not normally get because not everyone may be comfortable with you having a huge lens right in their face. Uh, so this inconspicuous look can actually be a real boon to your photography in certain situations. And it's certainly simple and straightforward. There's something to be said for the simplicity of leaving the house with one camera and one lens. You know, you've got one look. You don't have to worry about, uh, well, what lens am I gonna use? Am I gonna zoom this out? Uh, should I change lenses here? You have one lens, one look, and what you see is what you get. And, and that's, that can really foster creativity. You know, they say that limitation breeds creativity. And a lot of that is because you're not kind of paralyzed by your choices on location. And, and so having that one look, uh, again, can really make a difference in, in the simple approach to your photography. In addition, the more often you use any particular lens, you're gonna become more familiar with that particular focal length. You're gonna be more familiar with how it sees the world. And when you think about it, lenses are your most important creative tools in photography. You know, the lens is the actual tool that translates what you see into the camera. And, and, and since every lens has a different focal length and a different way that they show the world, once you learn how a particular lens looks, uh, you'll be able to understand quickly how that sees the world. And so when you come on a location, you'll be able to say, oh, I like that subject. I know how this lens behaves. I know what it's gonna look like before I even shoot it. And so that helps you see and compose quickly and efficiently. So you don't have to go, well, no, I don't like that. I guess I'll change lenses. No, what's the other lens gonna look like? No, maybe I'll put this lens on. 
you already know. You, you have a much better idea of what it looks like. So you can see the scene and go, oh, yeah, that, I know it's going to render it like this, so I'm going to stand over here because I know that's the perspective I'm going to want and so forth. Now, one thing to keep in mind when using normal lenses, and that's kind of what this middle range is called. I like to break lenses into the realms of wide, middle, long. And so this middle range, like this 35 to 50, maybe up to 70 millimeters, they don't always work well shooting far away. So if you're trying to capture a compelling subject off in the distance, a normal lens like this may not be the best choice. But if you start to move in close with a lens like this, like this 35, uh, you create a much more intimate view of your scene. Uh, and part of that is because uh, up close they have a shallow depth of field. And so that tends to isolate your subject from the background. And again, the closer you come into your subject, the more you can focus on the details of your scene and have this intimate viewpoint uh, while being separated from the nice blurry wash of stuff in the background. And so for that reason, uh, normal lenses like this are great for portraits, uh, especially when you're shooting close, like think head and shoulders and maybe even closer. Shooting a portrait from about 20 feet away with a lens like this is probably not going to give you the same level of, of visual impact that you'll get if you move closer. So again, close-up portraits, details, even landscapes, isolating specific scenes in the landscape. I've been walking around shooting this stuff for about an hour and you know I'm, I'm not close so I don't have that depth of field, that shallow depth of field, uh, but I'm still isolating smaller parts of the scene than if I had a wide-angle lens. It's still a more intimate view but it's not so narrow as if you were using a telephoto. So I, I actually love a 35 millimeter for landscapes. I think it works quite well, especially when you pick out small bits of your scene and isolate your subject matter. But as I said, when you move in closer with a lens like this, you start to accentuate that shallow depth of field and focus on the, on the details of the scene. Uh, and this 35 actually focuses down to about eight inches. So it's not a true macro lens, but it gets you pretty close. But if you combine it with one of Fuji's extension tubes, the little MCEX 11 and 16, then that does turn it into a true macro lens. And you can get surprisingly close with the camera and come up with some really wonderful dramatic macro shots. It's also a pretty fast lens. Uh, the 35 F2 has a relatively fast autofocus. It actually has a faster autofocus motor than the original 35 millimeter 1.4 that Fuji had when they first launched the X-Series. It also has a relatively fast aperture, f2. You know, it's not ultra fast, it's not that 1.4, but f2 is pretty fast. And especially when you think about how well the Fujis do at higher ISO settings. So yeah, f2 is fast. It's not the fastest lens, but if you need more light, crank that dial up and it's, it's still gonna look great. And what's the worst that can happen? You might end up with a little bit of grain in your photo. But as I like to say, grain is not the enemy. The enemy is thinking that something like grain in your photo is the worst thing possible. Plus, it can add a little bit of style to your photo. In fact, there's often times where I'll crank the grain up just to get that grain, just to get that stylized, gritty look to my images. Uh, but any, at any rate, uh, even cranking up to like 400 or 800 ISO on the Fujis, you're not going to see any, any real problem. Uh, you're, they're just going to look awesome. So the focus motor is maybe not as fast as some of the other lenses, like the 50 to 140 uh, or the 90 or even the 100 to 400. Uh, but it's still fast enough uh, in a lot of situations to, to make it pretty versatile. So I've shot action with the 35 F2, and I'm impressed with how fast it focuses. It's also weather sealed, as most of the newer Fuji lenses are. And weather sealing is definitely a good feature, especially if you're shooting out in difficult environments. Uh, shooting in wet weather, shooting in extremely dusty weather. In my mind, weather sealing is not the end-all be-all of a lens. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily not buy a lens because it wasn't weather sealed, but weather sealing does protect the lens elements uh, from getting dust inside, getting extra moisture inside. So, you know, again, dusty environments, keeping those little grains of dirt out of the lens. Now, I just find this little 35 F2 to be one of the most versatile lenses uh, in my kit. You know, when I first started, as I said, I had a 50 millimeter, which gave me this kind of look. Uh, and the funny thing was that after a while it kind of fell out of favor with me and I didn't use it for years. And so for whatever reason, when I got this 35 a few years ago, I, I fell in love with that classic 50 millimeter, that classic normal look again. Uh, and, and I've been using it all the time 
ever since then. In fact, it's pretty much the default lens that lives on this camera. Uh, it's like the permanent body cap that lives on my X-T3. Uh, and I just find it such a wonderfully versatile lens that I just, I usually start with that. Uh, and if I get to a scene and I think, well, maybe this is gonna look better in a wide angle or telephoto, I'll shift. But oftentimes uh, I'll start with this lens or this is the lens that I'll just take out in the world. Like, as I said, that one camera, one lens approach. So as I said, it's fast autofocus, relatively fast aperture, it's small and light, inconspicuous, weather sealed, and this little 35 f2 is actually the least expensive of all of the Fuji X-Series lenses. Uh, and a lot of the lenses cost twice as much as this. And so it's, from that standpoint, it's a wonderful budget lens for any beginning photographer, anybody just getting into the system, or if you're looking for an additional lens for your kit. Uh, it, like I said, just extremely versatile, relatively inexpensive, and a whole lot of fun. So as I said, I use this thing all the time in my photography. I love this lens. When I look back through my image catalog and see everything I've shot in the past few years, uh, a large percentage of the photos I've made are with this lens. Uh, and I simply can't imagine my life without it anymore. Uh, I have so much fun with it and I have get so much use out of this 35 F2. I think this is a great choice for anybody who's just getting into the system or anybody who's looking for a versatile, all around, uh, inconspicuous, small, compact lens that'll do just about everything. And as I pointed out earlier, uh, this, this type of lens is, is best used when you start to move in close to your subject matter. You start to accentuate and get a more intimate view of your scene and blur that background. From that standpoint, it's a great lens to use that abbreviation technique that I like to talk about. I think that abbreviation is, is a great skill to have in photography, being able to look at a subject and ask yourself, how little of that scene can I show and still get the message across, still let my viewers see what's going on. So that's what I think about Fujifilm's XF 35mm f2 lens. And of course, all of the creative techniques that I talked about during this lesson uh, will apply to other normal type lenses as well. So even if you don't have this particular lens, uh, you can still make use of those techniques in your photography. And of course, if you're a Fuji shooter, you'll want to check out my best-selling guide, X-Series Unlimited. It's a wealth of information and inspiration that can help you maximize your creativity and skill and fun with your Fuji camera. So I'll be doing more videos like this, uh, reviewing some of my favorite gear. Uh, so stay tuned and please subscribe to my channel. You can find me on Patreon and social media at Dan Bailey Photo, and you can check out my blog and website as well. So thanks for watching, happy shooting, take care, and I will see you next time.